Hey guys, welcome to INT Doctor. Today in this video, we will be discussing about history taking and obtaining a PFI for medicine cases. And uh, here PFI stands for Physical Examination Findings from the Examiner. So um, history taking, yes, in AMC, majority of your stations will have history taking as their predominant task. And uh, basically it can be divided into two types. So the first one is a detailed history and the second one is a focused history. So let's look at the example. So in this first one, you can see uh, the question is a 35 year old female comes to the emergency department with a history of shortness of breath. So task is you need to take a history, obtain a PFI, give diagnosis and differentials. So in this question, your predominant task is uh, history taking. So you will uh, need to spend a good four to five minutes in taking history, which should be again a detailed one. And uh, let's look at the second example. So here, a 35 year old female comes to your GP clinic with a history of hearing loss. So the task is you need to take a focused history, perform physical examination, give diagnosis and differentials. So as you can see in the second uh, question, your predominant task is a physical examination. Okay, so you want to spend uh, more time performing the examination. Here you, you'll have barely two to three minutes to um, ask history. Hence, it should be short and uh, try to ask only the relevant questions that will uh, help you come to a diagnosis. Sometimes the question may have a specific time duration given, like in this case, the second one, take a focused history for not more than three minutes. So in such cases, uh, you will hear a mini bell once your three minutes is over so that you can move on to your next task, that is performing physical examination. But in most of the cases, this time duration will not be given. So that's when uh, time management becomes quite challenging. So you need to practice a lot uh, so that uh, you'll be able to uh, figure out when you need to stop taking history and moving on to the next task. Now, uh, coming to the structure of history taking, the first thing that you need to do is introduce yourself and explain your role. For example, good morning, Joanne. My name is Mary. I'm one of the doctors in this hospital. Or if it's a GP setting, you can say well, I'm one of the doctors in this clinic. Then comes the presenting symptom or chief complaint. So uh, as we know that, you know, uh, the presenting symptom is already given in the uh, question itself. So um, either you can start with an open-ended question like uh, what brings you here or how can I help you? But what I personally prefer is that I try to be more specific. For example, uh, you can say something like this. Uh, from the notes, I understand that you're having uh, shortness of breath. Can you tell me more about it? Or, or what's, uh, what's been happening since then? Now, coming to history of presenting illness, we want to ask all information about the current symptom. And we can use the mnemonic Socrates uh, for this. Uh, Socrates is particularly uh, used for uh, pain or discomfort symptom but it can also be used for other symptoms as well. So let's start with um, S that stands for sight. So you want to ask um, the patient uh, where exactly the pain is. You can also ask the patient to point to the actual sight uh, on the body itself. Uh, this sight is not applicable to other symptoms like cough or shortness of breath and diarrhea. So it's mainly limited to the pain symptom. Then comes the onset. So in onset, you want to ask three questions. So the first one is you want to know whether the symptom is gradual or sudden in onset. Then you want to know whether it is continuous or intermittent. And then you want to know whether uh, the symptoms are getting worse or better. Now, uh, the third one is character. Again, this uh, is um, mainly for pain. You want to know uh, whether the pain is sharp, dull, stabbing, boring, burning or cramp like sensation. So you ask the patient to describe the character of the pain. 
then comes radiation again this is for pain or discomfort so what you can ask is um, whether the pain travels anywhere or whether the pain moves anywhere to the patient then comes um, elevating factors now you want to ask whether uh, anything makes the symptoms better uh, now comes timing so you want to ask two things here so ask when the symptoms first began and uh, also you can ask if um, the person is experiencing such symptoms for the first time um, then comes uh, asking about the exacerbating factors so what you can simply ask is uh, does anything makes the symptom worse now uh, finally we come to severity so pain or discomfort can be graded uh, on a 10 point scale uh, now whenever pain is your presenting symptom you want to uh, first of all ask how severe it is this is because you want to make the patient comfortable and pain free before you go on further history taking so uh, how do you assess uh, the severity of pain so you ask the patient on a scale of 1 to 10 with 1 being the least and 10 being the most can you rate your pain you also want to know if the patient has taken any medications for it now depending on this if the pain is uh, very severe then you can offer some medications um, and uh, and arrange some painkillers for the patient you also want to ask if the patient is allergic to any medications so um, once you're done with these questions, you can turn to the examiner and mention him that you would like to arrange some painkillers uh, for the patient. Or what I usually do is I just talk to the patient. I tell her that uh, I have asked one of the nurses to arrange some painkillers for you. It will take time for it to work. Meanwhile, is it okay if I ask few questions so that I can find the cause for the pain? So once I give the statement, um, usually the person will say okay and you can move on to your history taking. Now once you're done with your history of presenting illness, then you can ask the associated symptoms. You can ask the general symptoms such as tiredness, sleep, appetite and you can also ask fever and rash questions here. Then you want to do the system reviews. You can ask questions related to each of the systems so that you can rule out the differential diagnosis. Then comes um, the past history. You can ask about any illnesses or chronic diseases like high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels, diabetes, or any operations in the past. You can ask about uh, the family history, any um, significant uh, family history that is relevant to the presenting symptom. Um, then you can move on to the personal history where uh, you can use the mnemonic SADMA. So here S, it stands for smoking. So you have to ask the patient if the patient has ever smoked. Then you, if it's a yes, then you can ask how many cigarettes uh, did the person smoke each day and uh, for how many years or if the patient has ever tried to quit. Then uh, comes alcohol. You want to ask uh, if the person drinks alcohol or not, the type, how much and how often. Uh, the safe limit for both men and women is considered as no more than two standard drinks on any day. Then you want to ask uh, if the person is using any sort of uh, illicit drugs by any chance. Then also ask about the medications. Uh, both the prescribed ones or if the patient is taking any over-the-counter medications and then finally uh, a it is for allergies you want to ask if the person has any known allergies now uh, we come to travel history so you ask this uh, only when you are suspecting any infectious diseases so what do you ask so you want to know um, if there has been any recent overseas travel you want to ask the destinations visited, for how long did the patient stay there, and how did he live when away. So here you will ask questions like, did you drink unbottled water and uh, eat local foods? You also want to ask about camping and trekking if you're suspecting any mosquito burn diseases. Then comes the sexual history. Again, you ask this only if you're suspecting any genitourinary symptoms or any uh, in cases of blood borne diseases. Uh, where you want to know the cause of the uh, disease. 
So now we come to physical examination findings from examiner or the PFI. Usually this is the second task and you'll barely have one minute 30 seconds to spend uh, for this task. So uh, make sure you have a proper stru structure and practice a lot so that you can be quick and yet uh, manage to get all the positive findings from the uh, examiner. So you start with general appearance. You ask the examiner, like, um, can I know the general appearance of my patient? And usually the examiner will tell you um, whether the patient is normal or is in distress, if the patient is anxious, and uh, it depends on the case. Then you ask um, if you can appreciate any pallor, icterus, lymphadenopathy, cyanosis, clubbing, edema, dehydration on my patient. Again, you here you can be selective. You can ask only the relevant findings that you think is important in your case. Um, then comes the BMI of the patient. Then ask the vitals. So in vitals, you can ask uh, about the pulse, the rate and rhythm. Then comes the blood pressure. Make sure you ask about the postural um, hypotension as well. Then uh, comes the respiratory rate. Ask about the oxygen saturation and uh, temperature. Now, uh, coming to the systemic examination, it really depends on the presenting symptom. So, um, if, if it's a case of shortness of breath, maybe you want to ask uh, the respiratory system and cardiovascular system first, and then you can move on to other systems. And similarly, um, if, if it's a case uh, where there is a uh, patient is complaining of numbness and tingling sensation in the lower limbs, you want to do the lower limb neurological examination, you know, the sensory and motor examination first, um, and then move on to other systems. So again, when you're asking um, these questions from the systems, make sure you it's, it's quite short and yet try to cover all the topics, all the positive findings. So for cardiovascular system, you can ask if um, first heart sound and second sound is heard or not. You can ask if any murmurs or any added sounds are heard. Uh, ask about the carotid brewery, ask if there is any elevation of JVP. Now, similarly, in respiratory system, you can ask if bilateral vesicular breath sound is heard or not, if there is any added sounds or not. Keep it short and sweet, and yet it covers a lot of things. And But again, if, uh, you know, if it's a case of pneumonia and you're thinking like um, the inspection or palpation and percussion findings will be uh, important to you, then you can always ask um, them. And uh, so once you're done with the systemic examination, you can move on to the bedside test. You can ask about any urine dipstick or blood sugar levels uh, uh, available for that station. So now to summarize, uh, for all the medicine and surgery cases where history taking is your task, you start by introducing yourself to the patient. Uh, whenever the chief complaint is pain, make sure you assess the severity and offer painkillers. Uh, then comes to the presenting symptom. Uh, then in HOPI, make sure you ask all the questions related to the presenting symptom. Then in associated symptoms, you ask about questions related to each of the systems or you can also ask questions related to the differential diagnosis. Then you ask about the past history, family history. Then comes the SADMA questions. And finally, depending on the question, you can ask about the travel and sexual history. So once you're done with all of these tasks, you can move on to PFE. So, well, that's it for this video. I hope it was useful. Uh, if you have any queries, you can comment below. Thank you so much for watching.